folks, it's that time of year when some of us are hoping for a winter holiday blanketed in white, while others are already sick of dealing with the slushy stuff. Love snow or hate it, here's a collection of our favorite snow chemistry. Not just how it forms, but how to deal with it too. First up, here's how freezing water creates those beautiful, delicate flakes of snow, and why no two are truly alike. Snowflake starts as a dust grain floating in a cloud. Water vapor in the air sticks to the dust grain, and the resulting droplet turns directly into ice. Crystal faces appear on the frozen droplet. Then a prism forms with six faces in a top and bottom. A cavity forms in each prism face because ice grows fastest near the edges. Faster growth on the corners causes six branches to sprout. The lines in each branch are due to ridges and grooves on the surface. These six branches form the corners of a hexagon, which occurs because the water molecules chemically bond into a hexagonal network. When the temperature cools to minus 13 Celsius, new growth at the branch tips narrows. At minus 14, side branches sprout on each branch. Suddenly, the crystal encounters a quick blast of warmer air, followed by cooler air, and more side branches sprout. The crystal gradually warms, making the tips long and narrow. The crystal encounters even warmer air, which slows the growth and widens the tips. Finally, this unique and delicate structure falls to the earth along with countless other snowflakes. Cool, right? But what if you really need a winter wonderland and the weather just isn't cooperating? No need to fear, we can fake it. Artificial snow forms the same way as regular snow, as long as we can manage to mimic nature's exacting conditions. To make artificial snow, water cooled to just above its freezing point is pumped under high pressure through the nozzles of a snow gun. This thing blasts water and nucleating agents 20 to 30 feet in the air. The tiny nozzles in these snow guns break up the water into a superfine mist, and fans or compressed air help keep water particles afloat much longer to make sure they freeze before they hit the ground. Also, the compressed air expands when released, thus dropping its temperature alongside the temperature of the water particles. Another important component to making snow is to make sure that you've got the right combination of temperature and humidity. Lower humidity means that snow can be formed at higher temperatures. With untreated water, a temperature of about 18 degrees Fahrenheit, or about negative 8 degrees Celsius, is needed. If the temperature isn't cold enough, added materials are used for the nucleation. Just like with real snow, nucleating agents are extremely important for artificial snow. So in modern snow guns, there are a lot of different types used, including silver iodide or proteins made by special bacteria. Artificial snow is great for skiing or a bit of fun for the kids, but what if you're trying to get to work in the morning? We've got a bunch of life hacks for managing the wintry chill, including why kitty litter is your car's new best friend. Your car's stuck in the snow and can't get any traction on the road. Kitty litter to the rescue. Clay kitty litter is super useful in the winter because it helps produce a surface that your tires can catch traction on. Just throw the kitty litter down in areas where your tires are struggling. Basically what's happening is your car tires can't catch any grip due to either the slipperiness of the snow and ice or from hydroplaning in the slush. Kitty litter takes on water like a champ, including all the excess water created by the friction of your spinning tires. And as it does so, it expands, eliminating the muck of slush that keeps you going nowhere. This offers your tires an irregular surface to grab onto, hopefully leading to your safe escape. If you live any place icy enough, you know that salt scattered over sidewalks and roads seriously improves the slippery situation snowstorms can create. Salt actually changes the freezing point of water. Here's how it works. Turns out salt isn't actually about melting, it's all about freezing. So the freezing point of pure water rests at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. When the temperature of water reaches a freezing point, it's normally free-flowing molecules get trapped into organized crystal structures. This is how ice is formed. Salt disrupts this process. Upon hitting water, salt breaks up into two ions, one sodium and one chloride. These two ions then move around and take up space in between water molecules, pushing them apart and frustrating their potential links to form ice. This disruption is called freezing point depression. And so to put this simply, salt lowers the freezing point of water. I'd like to thank chemistry for keeping me from face planting on the sidewalk every morning in January. That's all for now. If you'd like to learn even more about snow and ice, check out the links to the full videos below. Thanks for watching, and if you can still feel your fingers after this chilly compilation, use them to hit that subscribe button and switch on notifications to see all our videos. Each one's special as a snowflake. We'll see you next week.